Hello everyone, I'm Dear Myrtle, your friend in genealogy, but you know that this channel is all about creating journals in order to tell an ancestor story. So when last we met, I made the cover for the journal that's going to go with this silver plate that is my grandmother Frances's. Now, uh, when I go upstairs to put this in the trunk, I'm going to get a slightly larger uh, envelope of what we call, well, I don't know, it looks like felt, but it's for keeping silver in to keep it from being tarnished. So uh, I don't know what you call it. I just know that you need it if you have silver plate or sterling silver. So I did wrap um, the silverware, the two forks, the two types of spoons and the knife uh, in this pretty old antique lace, but let's go ahead and I will read the journal to you. Um, I also know that once we get upstairs, um, I'm going to add one picture that is um, in my printer, <laughs> but I digress. So here we go with the cover. I declined to put the buttons on it that I planned, but the, the riddle is, when is silverware not silver? Okay, we open it up and it said, this journal documents a silverware pattern chosen by my maternal grandmother. And there's a little arrow that says springtime by Rogers Brothers in silver plate. And then I mentioned my grand maternal grandmother's name, Frances Irene Goring in parentheses. They're really going to learn this uh, genealogical phrase of a, a maiden name. Froman was the first husband. McDonnell was the second husband. I only saw Grandpa Froman once, and someday I'm going to tell you about him. Grandpa Mike McDonald was the one we knew the most. Uh, in this little tuck spot is a um, tag that shows the relationship of me, of Grandma Frances to my mother, to me, to my three daughters and their children. So they um, will understand again what that relationship is. When they come to my house to actually explore the trunk once COVID's over, I've heard them say just on the news today, we may be wearing uh, masks into 2022. But once my children do come, grandchildren and children, I can't dictate what order they will open a drawer in the old steamer trunk and pull out this journal or another journal. So I'm trying very hard to at least include some genealogical information every time in every journal. Well, then they'll know how they're related to this person or that. Okay, this is a very tiny journal. They managed to pack a lot of stuff into it. You'd think silverware is silverware, but here's dollar signs increasing. There's everyday flatware that's usually made of nickel with no silver. There's silver plate that has a thin layer of silver over that nickel. And there's sterling silver that's 92.5% silver. And the rest is something like nickel to make it stronger. Now, I don't have an example, <coughs> excuse me, of sterling silver. My mother insisted on sterling silver, and each teaspoon of her rose point pattern by Wallace, I think it was by Wallace, was about $80 per teaspoon uh, last time I checked. Um, I can remember wanting to buy her just one teaspoon for Christmas in 1969, and it was something like $45 then. I couldn't afford it. So I bought her painting instead from the neighbor. <laughs> I remember going to Grandma Francis's apartment near Lake Union in Seattle, Washington, nearly every Sunday for dinner. Yes, she'd check our hands and our ears before we could sit down to the table. That's something I discussed in a previous uh, ancestral journal. Her second husband was Mike A. McDonald, and he'd make the best salads. He would cut the carrots and the celery into the tiniest little mini uh, cut vegetables and then mix it in with the lettuce. I don't know why that sticks in my mind, but it's a memory I have. 
Mike was a twin, and his birth certificate says Dana McDonald. His twin was Dale. But in their lifetime, they became known as Mike and Pat McDonald. I tried to go with the flow here. We really like, well, we actually love Grandpa Mike. He smoked a pipe and worked at Rainier Brewery, which I always thought as an adult was an odd occupation for a recovering alcoholic. I just checked my database and he lived to be 71, a year older than I am right now. But we have to remember, folks, that uh, since then, medical technology has greatly improved. Uh, and the lifespan is longer. Okay, so now we've got a couple of things. I use some um, washi tape um, to insert this element, and it says open to see the floor plan of the apartment. When you open it, you can see part of the floor plan hard to do this and it says can you find the big closet now the big closet was a big deal we would come up the stairs and this is the landing in the apartment complex that was about three stories tall two apartments on each floor so grandmother's was on the right side and somebody else was on the left side of this landing you'd come in the front door and here is a sofa two chairs, a TV in the corner with windows facing south and west. I remember that distinctly because I've been by this apartment complex using Google Maps, Street View, and also I've driven by it many times. The dining room is here and I can remember fitting three people on each side with a big huge window. And if I'm thinking correctly, I'd swear that there was a uh, old fashioned heat register, um, you know, circulating water. Um, yeah, I think that's what was underneath that window, also here in the living room. Then there was the kitchen, which I only remember the sink looked out over the window and that the fridge was over here on the way toward their back hallway. The bathroom was here. And this was the bedroom. And this apartment had two doors. It had a door from the front stairwell and a door that went to the back stairwell where there was parking in the back for residents. I should actually move here. There, so you can see it a little bit better. The big closet in question is this right here. It had two doors and you could get from the living room to the bathroom by walking through this closet. And my grandmother had hat boxes and things that we never even think about having up on the shelves above all the hanging clothes. They also had a closet in their master bedroom. Well, their only bedroom, but I digress. Anyway, I tried to make flip outs and folds and things like that to make it interesting for my grandchildren to read this. As I was preparing this journal, I was thinking about this. We lived in a great big house. It was a mansion on Lake Washington in Laurelhurst on 55th Northeast. I don't know why we always would go to grandma's house for Sunday dinner because both grandmother and grandpa Mike, our step grandpa, worked full time. And our mom didn't. Our, my dad was a doctor. So I don't know. Anyway, I only remember the use of the dining room in our big house whenever mom would have a party and they'd put up all the um, card tables and play things like Scrabble and Monopoly with their friends. Or when we actually hosted the wedding for Grandma Frances and Grandpa Mike. Now I'm planning to just um, place in here a picture of Mike and Grandma Frances um, in the dining room cutting their wedding cake. Um, right now for me and my children, they, uh, and grandchildren, um, maybe I should say children and grandchildren, let's switch it. The grandchildren are heavenly. Uh, my daughters know where they are on my list, <laughs> but anyway, you are always welcome at my house, children and grandchildren. 
COVID-19 isolation has um, restricted our get-togethers right now. And I'm not going to check them because I trust they will keep their ears and hands clean. Apparently, this is a thing for my grandmother, Frances. Okay, in this talk spot, we have a, a journaling card where I said to my children and grandchildren, what do you remember about dinner at my house? Purple ice cream? The whipped cream incident? Oh, poor TJ. Or the snow angel hot tub challenge? We've had a lot of adventures over the years as we've lived in this house. And I think that uh, my children and grandchildren have come to love um, uh, Pop Pop, as they call Mr. Mert, just as much as we loved Grandpa Mike. I remember after my grandmother Frances died, how absolutely heartsick and broken he was without her. And I'm thankful that he found a sweet, companion for the last few years of his life as he was suffering from cancer, she did a lot to take care of him. Well, let's see. I guess the next thing to do is to take this up to my office, find the picture that I left up there having uh, printed it. It's in my printer, I know. <laughs> and uh, we'll do the ceremonial placement of this artifact and journal in the old steamer trunk. So now we are ready for the ceremonial placement of my grandmother's springtime silver plate pattern and the journal that explains when is silverware not silver. But as I promised, I've inserted the picture of Grandpa Mike and Grandma Frances cutting the cake in the not very much used dining room of our mom's home. And I've also found that this stuff is called silverware cloth. And I'm putting both the silverware and the journal in this bag, it's zippered, and that will keep the silverware from tarnishing. The stuff you learn, wow. I knew it was silverware cloth. Nothing left to say, but happy family tree climbing, everyone. And journaling, that's a wrap.